Okay, so at this point, um, I'm completely stuck and clueless on what to do. I already used all the techniques I knew, and uh, there's nothing left for me to do uh, with the techniques I know. There, there might be more that I, I'm unaware of. But this is what I do when I get stuck. I basically just try to eliminate uh, something in my head, just imagining uh, some numbers and trying to eliminate something. And this is how it, it works for me. So first I see all the numbers and I try to see the one that has more uh, squares for that number. So for example, there's four here, four options for the number two. So that wouldn't get me far away for the number three, there's uh, six, for number uh, uh, four, there's nothing, number five, there's also a few, for number six, um, there's also a few, and number seven, nothing, number eight, and number nine. All right, so the one that, that has more, I think it's number uh, five and six, so let's work with the number six. Um, so the process I follow, it's not it's, it, it's nothing simple. Um, there might be another way to make it simpler, but this is what I do. I basically plug on some some uh, numbers. I choose the, uh, a row that has uh, two options for number six, or a column. In this case, I'm gonna choose this column. So I'm gonna plug a six there and see how many sixes I can eliminate uh, in my mind. Don't erase the sixes yet, so because there's a second step. The second step is imagining that the other square is a six, because those are only the, the only two options, and and again eliminate the sixes in your mind, and the sixes that coincide uh, with all those with both cases, those would be the sixes that can be eliminated, because in either case. Uh, if the six is here, let's say that this can be eliminated. And if that's a six, let's say that in our mind we saw that that can be eliminated. So that means that that, that can actually be eliminated. Because in the only two possibilities, uh, that square will be eliminated. Um, so let's put that into practice. Let's. Uh, the first step is picturing a six there. And on the second step, um, we are going to picture a six there. So if we put a six here, that would mean that that cannot be a number six. This needs to be a number six. And this cannot be a number six. And also this cannot be a number six. So we eliminate this, this, and this in our mind. Try to remember those three squares. And now we go to the second step, imagining that there's a six there. That would mean that this square will be will have to be an eight, and if that's an eight, this would would need to be a three, and if if that's a three, this would need to be a five, and if that's a five, this one right here would need to be a six. Okay, and if that's a six, then this cannot be a six, and this cannot be a six. When we get to the to the point we wanted. Uh, to figure out where the six would work, would go, and in both cases we see that uh, this square uh, cannot contain a number six, and this one cannot have a number six either. We already do, did the two possibilities, and both of them disqualify these two uh, squares for the number six. And at that point, uh, all the puzzle is going to be solved. So let's um, let's see that. So we eliminate that six. And we eliminate that six, and everything else will be simple here. So we put the one there, the three, the one, five, and everything is solved at this point. So it's a little bit of thinking ahead, a little bit of chess in our mind, uh, but it, this is what makes Sudoku very interesting. So we have the the opportunity to work with our minds a little bit. This is actually why I play Sudoku, because of those uh, thinking process moments. Uh, if everything would be, if everything is easy, I 